Hello, I'm back. Uh, where have I been? Uh, right, okay, this is a long one. I was going to go down the Trent and Mersey, and that's when I left you on the last video. Uh, and then uh, I got as far as Willington and decided that it was probably better for me to um, get a moor in and uh, get back to work. Uh, finances were running a bit low and um, Spike injured himself when we were in Spain and he um, he wasn't really up to it. He lost a lot of weight. I thought I was going to lose him at one point and uh, the dogs aren't insured anymore um, because their insurance, as soon as they reach 10, they're 11 now. Um, just skyrocketed and it, I just couldn't afford it um, so um, Spike hasn't hadn't been well um, and lost a lot of weight went really skinny I thought I was gonna lose him and I thought I had a, a, a really big vet bill coming up so I thought I've got to go back to work earn some money so I can pay the vet bill um, yeah so basically I got a moor in in Nozal in Staffordshire on the Shropshire Union. Lovely mooring, had a garden, dogs loved it, registered with a local vet. Uh, Spike miraculously started getting better. It was really horrible. He's got arthritis and um, he was in a lot of pain. And um, yeah, he started getting better um, after several months. And um, that's why I haven't been cruising. So I've been going to work nine till five in it and uh, earning money to. Uh, keep my dogs alive and um, that basically because um, no matter what people tell you you don't earn a lot of money on YouTube unless you got like kind of you know 50,000 subscribers or something I think my my average earnings is something like 30 pounds a month so uh, that's not gonna pay Spike's vet bill uh, yeah so I had to basically uh, knock the YouTube on the head for a bit and then um, go out and earn some money so um, I had this more in um, the other week I went to leave the moor in and I was buried in silt the um, it was very shallow when I went on the moor in and um, what had happened what had happened because it's just safe of if you know at Norbury Junction there's a lot of trip boats come out and they go absolutely bonkers when they come into nose or they're flat out most of them some of them are okay but the uh, majority of them are uh, speeding and uh, yeah, so um, I was stuck in the mooring and it took me three hours to get off. So I notified the Canal River Trust and said, Hi guys, like you know, I'm, um, I can get off my mooring. There's no way whatsoever I'm going to be able to get back onto it. And they sent me an email back saying, Well, basically, we're not going to dredge it. It would cost too much money to the trust. Um, so I thought, um, Here I am. I'm just a boat going past. I'm stuck on a mooring. <laughs> And uh, I can't get on it, so it's a lovely mooring, but the mooring's no good if you can't get on it. Uh, so anyway, I uh, I gave the mooring up, and um, here I am back out on the canals. So I'm at Cool Palate at the moment, um, and Spike's a lot better. So um, yeah, he's not limping anymore. He's uh, put some weight on. I'm actually looking at it at the moment, but he won't come out because there's a bit of clay shooting going on in the background, and he he's very. Uh, gun shies are spiky so yeah so we've come up to cool Pilate uh, we, uh, we we left Nozal uh, we spent the first night we did a bit of uh, night cruising which was lovely because I got a really big uh, LED light on the on the front of the boat so we did a bit of night cruising and uh, stopped at Norbury Junction which I think is about three four miles up from Nozal I uh, spent the night there and had a lovely sleep it was nice to be back out on the boat again I really just enlightens you just you know end up not giving a crap about the world really and uh yeah so we, we left there and then uh, we went up to, all the way to market drayton which was a, a long long day up through uh, turley down the locks uh stopped to market drayton for a few days went up to the uh jules brewery and had a few uh, pints of slumber and monk and the uh, the dogs uh had uh, a few biscuits up there so uh and if you're going through market drayton go to jules brewery 
um, go there on a Friday because you get free sausage rolls at five o'clock. And I tell you what, these sausage rolls are not like sausage rolls from Iceland. They're like proper, proper, proper sausage rolls. And uh, don't worry about tea, just a couple of them sausage rolls, you ain't moving far. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so we did that. And then we moved to the top of, we did the Adderley flight. And then we stayed at the top of um, Audlem. And because we had a rainy day. And then the next day we come down and went into Audlem. I spent the day there and then only had two locks to do after that. Did uh, 13 of the locks, um, so two more, three more to do, sorry, I so did 12 of the locks. And then we uh, we scoobied on down um, uh, from Audlem and we went to, uh, well, we just left Audlem and we came here to Cool Pilate. And the reason we're here, A, it's a lovely little space. Um, and it's in the middle of nowhere, uh, which is nice just to kind of find yourself. And uh, yeah, so we've come here. We're uh, we're going to uh, paint the boat. So I've put it off for ages. The boat looks terrible at the moment. The paint has gone really bad. It's been on there just over 10 years. It's faded. Um, the other side is a lot worse. It's, bloss it's bloomed, so it's all got white patches in it and all that. And I mean, I fix people's boats for a living. So if you're advertising from a boat that's not very tidy, it doesn't do your business any favours. So, uh, so yeah, so enough wobbling on. Um, the Today, we're going to start painting the boat and uh, I'll show you. Okay, let's get going. Oh, getting old. Hello, Baldy. This is old Archibald. Handsome as ever, aren't you, mate? Spike's in the uh, boat at the moment, like I said, because there's a load of uh, um, shooting going on over there. Yeah, this uh, I've already started scraping the roof some time ago on the boat, but um, I actually put like a, a satin varnish on last year, and as you see, it's just never really keyed to the paint, and it's kind of when we had that heat wave last year, it, um, yeah, it's just gone a bit crappy. So it's made the boat look really untidy. And I mean, that's that's got to be red oxide that has. And uh, still got my little tent on there, but that'll be going soon because we got rid of the mooring and I've got to get a car trailer on there, my little car trailer that I bought. So we got all the kit out. Uh, it's just a jungle in there at the moment, completely upside down. And uh, yeah, if you look at the paintwork, it's gone absolute crappy. So I've took all the stickers off yesterday. We had a bit of rain yesterday and we had a couple of hours where it wasn't raining. So I come out and de-stickered the boat. So uh, yeah, it's not good. And we've got a bit of, bit of grot happening on top of the windows there. And I've actually got a little leak. So I'm gonna have to, first job will be to grind all that down and uh, get a, um, a bit of uh, rust treater in there, rust killer. And then uh, go from there, all the uh, grip tape, which I put, it's it lasted about five years, so it ain't done too bad. That's started to lift now on this side. And you can see the old uh, Dodger sign there, um, which we took off yesterday. So there's a bit of sticky residue on there. So I've got some um, acetone and I'll, uh, I'll get that off um, and go from there. Where's old spiky boy? Let's see if we can see him through the... Uh, he'd be on the bed, I imagine. Boat's a bit upside down at the moment, so excuse the mess. Where's that fat dog? Skinny dog. Right, mate. There he is in there. See him? You all right, mate? You coming out? You won't come out, will you? It's like I said, there's, a, there's some banging going on over there and he doesn't like it, so... Right. Let's yap in, more doing. Let's get going. Soft pad on a, on a grinder. Get that fender. Safety glasses. Safety first, as they say. battery new 
battery. Take two. Whoa, it's beef. Awesome. Come and have a look at what we've found. We have a hole which will explain. That's all right around there. I'm just getting all the excess seal. Don't worry about the window frames. They're going to get painted. They're anodized at the moment, but they're going to get painted um, gold. So there's me hole. That's why I've got me dripping window. So that's going to get some rust killer and then allow a little bit of filler in there. And some pitting there, I'll have a bit of filler on there. Still got a bit of sealant to do there. And uh, yeah, this window leaks here and the one over there with a star in it, he leaks as well. He's worse than this one, so he's going to take a bit of doing. Um, all these ones are here, but they have got a bit of sealant on there. I used this sealant when I fitted the windows the other year and it's actually for um, putting skylights on camper vans. And the thing is, it never stopped expanding, so I put the windows in and then it just kept expanding out of size and then you can't get it off, but it seems like the soft pad on the grinder gets it off. So anyway, you don't want to see me do those, so I'll prep the windows up and then uh, we'll move on to the sanding. Ooh, right, that's the first bit out of the way. That's all the uh, little niggly bits that the sander can't get into done. And uh, the next... Uh, Thing is to get the sander out and uh, do like a first uh, like a 120 grit and then I think my mate told me 120 then 80 but we'll see how the 120 gets on and then we'll go from there I'll uh, I'll show you how far we got it's uh, I hate jobs like this blooming horrible so yeah so that's all the niggy bits hopefully I don't leave any grinding scars and uh, the old boat dog traveller, eh? Even took the sticker off of the, the blooming channel. Uh, yeah, so we're getting there. All around the windows, got all that crap out. And uh, this one's done. Like I say, there's our hole. It's dripping down in my sink for years. And uh, it's amazing how it happens, isn't it? And uh, yeah, so I actually scribbled the... Uh, all that ink, all the ink off there, and then I'll go over that and just blend it in because there was a bit like here where it went down to like the previous coats. So obviously, this boat was grey at some point, or well, that might be primer, and it was red before then. It was actually grey when I bought it. Uh, I went for green, and there's a bit I feel the edges of that on there. So, uh, right, let's get the uh, get the sand there. I want to crack on today because. Um, we we'll forecast rain tomorrow, and I want to try and get some kind of protection on there. So right, Archie's, uh, your Arch? <laughs> He's sucking it all in, he wants to help. Right, let's crack on. Right, sander, sander, sander. Oh, I could have really done with some. I think there's power we got on that battery. Anything? Yeah, sander works, cool. Right. I got these. Oh, not me nuts hanging out. Um, what have we got then? P80. That's 80. 120. So we'll try a 120. I got these off of eBay. They're only about seven quid. Oh, better condition than the one that was in there before. Oh, bloody hell! Got that off me mate Lakey. God bless you, Mr. Colin Lake. Until the extractor rolls line up. Ah. Oh. Look at that, semi-professional. <laughs> Let's kick ass. It's a no-no. Time for something a bit rougher. Oh. 
think I got my ass around my tits there. It was, uh, I think he said start with 80 and then move on to 120. Because I've just noticed that the higher the number, the smoother this pad. So it's got to be, um, yeah, it's probably a amount of grit it's got in it, I suppose, something like that. Right, I'm going to start on 40 because there is quite a bit of bumping on there. A bit of bumping and the grinding and sanding. So we'll, we'll try it with 40. 40 is kicking ass. We'll stick with 40. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately the pads don't last very long. My mate did say he's like a professional, does pianos and all that, sprays pianos. He said the cheap pads, you'll get loads of them, but you'll, they won't last very long. You'll be chucking loads of them away. So, uh, yeah, oh well, not to worry. It's crack on, isn't it? Well, that's the second one gone. Knackered. Uh, onto the third. And we are, uh, just ran out with first battery on the grinder as well, which is a bit of a pain. But I'll, uh, I shall run the one that was in the disc grenade, which is, oh, on his ass. Could be one of them days. Uh, and you should have a mains voltage one. All right, I'll show you uh, how far we've got. All right, Bell. All right, so we've done the four cabin. Uh, that was reasonably easy. And then we've just got past the first porthole. <laughs> uh, okay. If you see me on the cut, don't forget to say, lovely paint job. And I've had the radio on as well, but unlike the last video where I went into a pub and they had the radio on, and then when I uh, uploaded it, I got caught on the royalties and they gave all the money, which was probably about 30 quid or whatever, to blooming Sony Columbia. So, Spikey, and Spike's back out. You alright, mate? What's up? You alright? Right. Let's crack on. <laughs> Alright, that's the boat done on the old uh, 120 grit, P40 grit even. Oh, I am not enjoying this. My lens is covered in paint as well. Oh, better show you um, how far we're getting then. So yeah, that's the 40 grit done. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Bit of a pain. I wish I had my air compressor on the boat because I could have blown all that dust off. So, but it's quite good because there's a bit of a breeze and um, the uh, the dust is all blown away from me, so I'm not inhaling any of it. So that's all right. Right, let's move on to the next one down then, and see how we get on with that. And the next one down is what's the next size down, Arch? Next size down is what 40, so that'd be 80, wouldn't it? That'd be 80. Yeah, P80. Yeah. Right, we'll uh, give that a go. Oh. oh, yeah. Oh, this is going to take a bit longer than I thought it was going to take. Um, I'm back down to the 40 grit now. Oh, what's that? That's 120. Thought it's on the floor. Yeah, the 40 grit's the really roughest stuff I've got. Um, what it is, that's the 40 grit, what it is, is I've got, um, I put a varnish on here, um, uh, Albatrol, uh, Oxid Vernis varnish a couple of years back, and, uh, it never really keyed to the paint properly, and it went all flaky and horrible, but the only thing is, it is hard, it's like trying to take the pattern off a plate, it's, um, a nightmare, if I show you, that little section there, that's taken me uh, eight, 10 minutes, just that little section now. The rest of the boat has all been done. But if I show you, you can see the varnish on there. 
you can feel that on your finger so if I put any kind of paint on that it's gonna look absolutely cack so I've got to uh, hopefully I'll have enough pads I'm have to order some more 40 grit for the other side but that's not a problem I was down to 80 grit and I thought that was it and I come back blew the dust off it and it was rough as a badger's ass underneath see that's nice and flat but that is just you can just see it there see it's crap so Oh man, only who does this for a living, I have no idea. Better crack on, I suppose. Yapping at a camera is not going to get it done, is it? So let's crack on. Ooh, right, it's about three hours later now. So we've uh, finished rubbing that varnish off. Oh, what a nightmare that's been. Absolutely, I have used so much 40 grit. Um, and uh, this is the result, so. What we've got to do now basically i've just put some filler in i've done the brush treatment uh put the filler over the window and a couple of little holes holes elsewhere and what i'm going to do now i'll show you the the, uh, the result of the sanding a lot of work flipping neck a lot of work and uh we've got to go over it now with panel wipe um get the uh degrease the surface ready for the first uh I'll use a foam roller for the first very light um, coat. Um, I need to get something on there because of the fact that it's going to rain tomorrow. So yeah, so this is what we're left with. It's uh, that's the uh, basically the, the sanded surface. We've got to uh, panel wipe it down yet to get all the dust off with an anti-static rag. And uh, yes, yeah, so everything's done there. You can see this has got to be sanded. So I'm just waiting for that to go off at the moment. And that's all been killed with crust. Um, yeah, that's a lot of work, believe me. So, at the front on the fore cabin, we're, uh, we're all sanded down. So what I'll do now is give that a quick wipe with the uh, this stuff here. Degreaser, panel wipe, whatever you want to call it. And uh, go from there. One side to put it on, and the other side to take it off. Probably doing that wrong, but it's always worked for me in the past. This is just getting any kind of impurities out of the surface of the paint that might um, react with the paint. But I mean, Rust-Oleum is pretty pretty good paint anyway to be honest you're not a lot reacts with that it's, you know, a lot of people use it the different if I was using Craftmaster or whatever so we'd have to prime it but the uh, rust-oleum is all in one and it's got a rust preventer on it so it'll go direct to metal everything so basically that is that uh, that surface ready for a bit of the wet stuff on there oh not even near a pub. I can't even go for a pint tonight, and there's no booze on the boat because I'm being a good boy and having a week off it. I think I'll have to celebrate the end of this with a cup of tea. Hey. Right. Oh. All right. So I got me. Uh, where are you? Oh, there you are. That's better. See me now. I got me uh, my roller, my gloss roller, and all surface advanced darkest green Rustoleum Universal. You can put this on everything. I'm well, not really after a showroom uh, finish because my boat's a working boat and it gets scratched, the paint gets ripped off. I just want something that looks half decent that you can uh, touch up easily. So. That's why I don't believe in spraying boats because I've seen a lot of nice polishy spray boats. They go down the Clang and they uh, they um, get a bush alongside them. It puts a big scratch down, and you'll never uh, you never touch it up. You'll always see it. So, so I think you're better off hand painting boats. 
bother than them. Mmm, dark is green. Ugh, oh, I'll put, didn't put my gloves on, have I? Bollocks. Right, so that's the. Uh, oh, I really need to put my gloves on. Um, yeah, so this is the colour. Darkest, darkest green. Like a British racing green, but darker. So, uh, like I said, I'm not a shiny boater. It's a satin paint. Um, I don't want um, shiny boater paint. So, yeah, so um, let's get a lick of this on the old uh, paint and go from there. On the old boat and go from there. Oh! Right, so paint and a little roller crate. There's a Wilco brush. I didn't want to use one of these. I was going to get a decent brush, but I didn't buy one because I've got a Harris, really nice Harris brush on the boat somewhere, but the boat's at it. So um, we'll see how we get on with this. I think the uh, it should pretty much flatten itself out, this paint. I think it's not a fussy paint. Where's the roller? So what we'll do is we'll put the paint on and then get the brush and just flatten it out. So, Oh god, I hope this works. It can't be much worse than what was flipping on there, that's for sure. Now, am I using the correct roller? This is like a kind of a military paint colour, really. Which is okay, I don't mind. I'm all for that. Match me camper. I want a really thin coat on the first coat because it'll dry quick. I'd rather put thin coats on and build it up and then thick coats. They're going to take forever to flip in and go off. It's getting a bit dark here at the moment. Enough because I think we might be in for a bit of rain later. If there was a chance of showers today. What can happen with these rollers sometimes is you can uh, the paint because it's uh, got a um, uh, you know like spirits and all that in it. It can start dissolving the rollers, which ain't cool. So what I'll do is I'll just go. Might as well do the whole whole of this. Shouldn't we? We should mask that porthole up really. And this, uh, being rust oleum as well, this paint, it's got a uh, an anti-rusting agent in it as well, so, which is nice. Keep old Dodger from rotting away. God, I'm going to look like some out of Ukraine with this place. It's a bit military, this is. I thought it was going to be dark. It'll probably, I'm hoping it'll, it'll, uh, it'll dry darker. Cause it's meant to be... Not dark green, it's meant to be dark this green. Right. So now you can see there's my arse, isn't it? Right, so if you get a always get a few brushes, blue bristles come out on the first one. So we wanna just get like that. Let's put a bit of line. Let me get into it. Don't put too much on the brush because otherwise you'll get runs and it'll sag. And it looks at the moment. It's all right. Ooh, check me out. All you painters out there, but you've got a bad voice from shouting at me, aren't you? You're doing it wrong, you're doing it wrong. Who's this bloody idiot? Oh God, it's a bit thick, this paint. Oh god, there's another bristle in it. Bloody crap. Crap brushes! I should have just rolled it and then. Hopefully, eventually, the brushes all, uh, the brushes will stop falling out of the bloody brush. I came across this 
You're not looking at my shorts, are you? Actually, a really good, oh, that's all, really good finish on the bloody, just on the roller. I might scrap the brush idea. But he was going for it there. Oh, what the hell's this? Archie Bolt, stay away from bloody dog ears now. Anyway, you get the gist. I'll show you what it's like when it's finished. Well, I've got two fin coats on at the end of the day now, it's six o'clock, the dogs want walking and the feeding and uh, yeah, quite happy, sat in, sat in there, so it's not, not shiny, I didn't want shiny, I'm not, I'm not a shiny boater and um, yeah, it's turned out alright, I'll give you, give you a look, but yeah, so that's, that's what we got at the moment, it's difficult to tell on the, uh, on the camera, isn't it, but um, what I'll do is I'll very finely hand sand that and then I'll put a uh, um, a nice I'm gonna get myself a nice brush because that Wilco thing is just junk I just got to paint those bits on the top of the windows got to sand that off but the rest of the paints wet so I don't want the dust contaminating the paint so I'll let that dry for a couple of hours and then I'll come out and I'll sand that and then I'll uh, I'll put the um, uh, uh, put, put the brush over that so uh, yeah so we just got one top coat now I'm quite happy the paint is absolutely brilliant paint I can't I can't fault it with the rust-oleum absolutely brilliant if you're after like uh, some decent paint it's not cheap you know it's not cheap paint or anything but uh, yeah it's brilliant brilliant paint I'll use it again it really is better than that hammer shite that was on there before so I never use that junk again yeah so uh, that's it and uh, I think we'll wrap it up today. There. I've got to put all this crap away yet. Oh man. And then uh I'm in the middle of nowhere, there's no pub, otherwise I'd go for beer. But yeah. Anyway, stop babbling Del. Nice to see you again. I'll uh I'll get back to um uh travelling um the next couple of days and I'll get a couple of vlogs up and uh like I said we're gonna head up for the clan Goflin. Um I haven't been up there this year and I always go there every year. So I'm um, going to head up there and that's oh, going to take me so ages to sort this mess out. And then um, we'll scooby on do to, um, I don't know where we're going, we're just roaming rain like jippos. So here's Archibald. Archibald, come say hello. Yeah. Hey boy. Come see. Here he comes. They've been brilliant today. They've just been, they've just been sleeping all day mostly. All right, mate. Yeah, oh, my pepper. Got a boy Right, better get these guys fed. Cheers, Arch. I'll uh, see you on the next one. Take care.